2001, first Paco, I was presenting um, Rage. Rage was this little independent film that we made. It took us three years to make a uh, shot in London, totally independent. And uh, it, was a, it was kind of an honor. It was like, you know, really coming back from look, Europe. I was living in London at the time, coming back to sort of show people here what, what, what I was up to, you know, over in, in England. And, you know, it was exciting, but at the same time, I don't know, I'm, I get overwhelmed by, <laughs> um, I don't know, just a lot happening, you know, there was a lot happening. And uh, it was mad, trying to find a kind of a, a calm, you know, amongst all the, you know, so much happening, but, uh, but exciting. Um, exciting, as, as Fest Paco tends to be, you know, after you overcome the hurdle of um, getting your badge, rest, registering and stuff like that. And then, then more than that, meeting friends, you know, meeting new film, filmmakers, you know, from African filmmakers from France, whom, whom I didn't know at the time. Rage, Rage, Rage was, was selected in competi uh, for the official competition. Um, and um, uh, like I said, which I was sort of quite surprised, but um, you know, pleased um, to be accepted in that way. As a, a filmmaker, um, I was born in Nigeria, I grew up in Nigeria, I came to London at 19. So uh, I don't know, I think the criteria for FESPACO for competition is like filmmakers of African descent, uh, African descent or something like this. Um, but. But actually, I mean, first back of 1997, um, I had a film, a short film. That was my first, actually, first time I, uh, my film was shown here. It was a short film I did called On the Edge, uh, which was in competition, a short film competition. Again, that was shot in London. Again, that was an independent film that, that, I, that we did, you know. Um, so, in a sense, my films, had, I had a film that had already been introduced, had been sort of introduced into Fest Pack, and the, film, the short film went on to win the best short film. And so there was, you know, it was, seemed like a, you know, a continuum. First of all, you know, um, I didn't expect, any, I didn't expect anything. For me, it's hard enough making the film, and I think through the whole process of making the film, and uh, when it's done, I don't know about other filmmakers, but I'm so exhausted and I'm so pleased that it's all done and, you know, it's out there showing. So uh, I, was, I, I was alone, I was by myself. I, I didn't prepare anything. I didn't, um, I, I didn't think about it, but, you know, so, I remember at the stadium when I was when my name was called, it, I think it took me about a minute or two minutes to sort of react. And this was, that was uh, my, a friend of mine, Jihan El Tari, the Egyptian documentary filmmaker, going, it's you, Newton, it's you, it's you. <laughs> and and so there, was, there was a moment, there was like this moment of like, you know, uh, and um, I went back after the um, ceremony, there was a screening, there's, there's a screening, a special screening, I think for, I don't know for whom, officials, or I don't know, or to present the winning film. And I, uh, I went to that, just presented the, presented the film, and then rushed back to the Hotel Independence, locked the door, went up to my room, locked the door, um, and just sat there, you know, just sat there, totally, totally dazed. And previous day, Ezra had picked up, I think, about four other prizes. So I was just like in this flow of, um, you know, um, uh, uh, of a flow of a days, if you can, if you can say that, just totally, just totally phased. Uh, but but uh, after it's you know it sinks in and, um, and 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 maybe it's also the thing about me. I don't know when, when it's if I win something, something good happens. I tend to go into a depression. <laughs> uh, 
I tend to like like slump into kind of uh, you know momentary de de depression, thinking uh, perhaps I'm not worthy. I don't know. I've just spent most of my most of my. It's been 20 years since film school. I've spent most of it sort of struggling, moving around, trying to find this sort of not a home, well a home, but a home um, a home where I could just do what I love to do and stay away from all the, um, you know, everything around it, but just you know, concentrate on work and, you know, um, that's really what's most important to me. You know, I'd have liked more people to see the film, for the film to go, to, to get out. But what it did do was it, it did go to a lot of festivals, I think about 400, 500 festivals. It did travel across, really across the world, but through festivals. Picked up by a distributor in the States, um, a small distributor, a specialized distributor in um, um, African films. It was programmed at the uh, Film Forum for a couple of, uh, a couple of weeks, uh, two, three weeks of uh, screen for th two, three weeks, I think, at the Film Forum in New York. Um, it was picked up in South Africa. I think it's been shown there theatrically, I think. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, TV, um, it was shown in, in France by Arte, who funded the film. So they, they had, they had, it was shown on Arte and released theatrically in, in France. But it didn't really get any sort of um, major distribution or um, you know, on the sort of uh, uh, theat <coughs> commercial theatrical um, um, thing. As well as a classic situation where, you know, um, you you decide to make a film as a filmmaker, and you have a, the situation is offered to you in terms of the finance, the finance for the film. Sort of, you get green light, and then you start to go. You go into the into what you're trying to do. I'll just go back because this is, a, this is very important for me. I, I've spent a lot of time pushing scripts that, that, that never got made. So at some point you sort of, it's, it's, it's for me, which is a sad process to be detached from material until when you know it's going to happen, then immerse yourself. And so when, when, when we had the green light, um, I, I started to, I got deeper and deeper into this world and just totally um, thought to myself, what are you doing? You're, Setting yourself up, setting yourself up uh, for failure. You know, this is like really it's all the elements. Because I wanted to try and capture the universe of the child soldier, um, not just um, not just his personal life, but everything that was oscill everything oscillating around him, everything things that he was aware of, things he wasn't aware of, his subconscious, uh, just ev uh, um, everything. Perhaps too much, um, but I wanted at least. Even if I didn't capture that, but I wanted to be aware of it. And I, the, green, the script that was greenlit was actually something that we wrote. You know, I, I worked with a co-writer, um, did most of writing, but, but collaborated more like with a co-writer. Um, the script, script that was greenlit was uh, all written in, in, in re written, researched in, in Paris. Um, so after with the green light, I thought. Listen, I, I think I need to go to Sierra Leone. And I asked them, I would like to go to Sierra Leone to just be there, spend some time there, meet, meet some of, the ki of these kids. And we, they said, OK, fine, go ahead. And, I, and um, I went to Sierra Leone, and basically I just got totally thrown by everything. And you know, you're, not, you're no longer dealing with cold research. You're not working based on cold research. You're reacting to, you know, I'm, I met a couple of hundred child soldiers. You know, I just basically just immersed myself in, in their world. And, and I remember I got back and I just thought, I just looked at the script and thought, basically I had this really cold script that had no life in it, that, that didn't really contain what I felt, you know, um, being there. And I, and I asked to scrap that script, to, uh, I would like to rewrite. And everyone just went, no, you can't do that. You know, you, you know this has been greenlit. This is like, uh, and, 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 um, I remember thinking, okay, fine. I, I, I don't do that. You, you scare people by saying things like that, you know. And I thought, I, I, I think I have the framework within the script. And when I get there, when, I, when I'm out there, I can feed every, all, all the stuff I wanted to into the, into the material. Um, because I was sort of demand, I was, 
I always have like a two week, three week period of re of rehearsals. It's it's how I, I how I work, you know. So so I spent this period, these two weeks in, on on location in Rwanda, working with the actors, trying to fit in all the stuff that I you know the emotional stuff, the you know just bring more complexity into 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 this into this um, material. Um, and that, 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 that really was, that was the process um, of, uh, you know, of, from you know, commission to script and then, and then finally shooting. And then, of course, trying to re recreate, um, you know, as some sort of atmosphere. But it was clear for me also, I think as well, it was clear for me that I didn't want to make it from about Sierra Leone. It was not. It was not about Sierra Leone. This came to me after. This was a gradual. This a gradual period. I, I, I try not to fix myself. I'm always sort of open and if try. You know, I think filmmaking for me is a process of. If, this has to be an evolution from the script. There has to be an evolution from the idea. An evolution from the script. Um, an evolution from the uh, rush. From after you've shot everything. Has, it has to continue to grow until you lock it at final. You know, final cut. Um, so I, I decided that I didn't want to make a film about the, one, a, a country's conflict. I wanted to talk about war, um, but from the kinds of conflicts that we were seeing in Africa or, you know, between in the 90s and in the early early you know, well, early 2000 to the early 2000s and, be, and beyond actually 70s, you know, because this is a sort of similarity between what happened in Angola, you know. Well, you just suddenly saw you saw, I, you saw I saw the pattern. You see, and so I was I wanted to work from that, you know, more like patterns as opposed to specifics. And I thought I didn't want to do a documentary. Um, I wanted to I didn't want to just shoot stuff and capture from the distance. I wanted to make a film where an audience would actually feel like they're in that in that, this children's. Um, in their heads, in their world, be close, get in there, and, and, and just put an audience there, make so they can feel, as a, feel what, what, what it's like. I think uh, <clears throat> basically the answer is the answer is, uh, goes back to the beginning of my coming into cinema. I came into cinema by accident, by chance, and um, um, ended up at the London Film School. Um, you know, hardly with much uh, breadth of knowledge of, of cinema. Um, I was sort of being groomed towards the sciences. That was what I studied, I studied at school. Um, that was what I began to study at university before leaving that because, um, you know, it was a time of military dictatorship. This, the education system was collapsing and I had an, I had a opportunity, an opportunity to come to England, stay with an auntie and try to and and once that break happened suddenly i realized this is not the, this is not my direction i'd been struggling with maths maths physics <laughs> pure and applied mathematics <laughs> physics and, and stuff that that really um, um, didn't sit well with me and then then i came across this thing called cinema and then ended up at the film school and but ended up at a film school that was international and that, for me, if there's anything that, that really that, that, that I would always uh, I always say about the, about international film school is that international dimension. The fact that I was there with filmmakers from across the world, I, I, and hence, you know, influenced by their cinema, introduced to all kinds of cinema, and I just basically binged on cinema. You know, it was just that, that, you know I get obsessive. I, f I find something I like, and I just throw myself in, and I just binge. I just I just suck everything out of it. And, and the, the, the film school offered, offered me that, that exposure to world cinema, world cinema in the true sense, not world cinema as a kind of ghetto cinema. Um, and, um, and secondly, the freedom within the International Film School, uh, the, the London Film School is called now, um, to move around, to work on different you know, work. I worked on every level of sound recordist, which I liked actually. Um, on, um, I worked as an editor. I, 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 I directed, uh, I think, three, three films. The whole lot, you know, cinematography. I, I think I did cinematography in a couple of films. And so, so I think that's that. Before right, deciding, okay, 
directing was what I really wanted to do. I was writing, so, you know, writing and directing. Um, so that atmosphere, that training sort of unleashed for me someone who didn't have a formal idea about filmmaking and just sort of encouraged my sort of freedom. Um, uh, and it's still the way I make films today. And as scary as it is to me, to uh, every time to walk into to walk onto a film, saying to myself, "Okay, I know. Trust yourself. You you you've started. You started with the first word on this the blank page. You wrote it. You know, even before that, the idea, the writing, um, all of that for me was is also like preparation to the shoot. And I, and on the set." Um, I, um, you just let intuition mostly take over, um, and that's what I. That's that's really what I do. I used. I remember when I decided I would never do storyboards anymore. I would never do short lists anymore. I don't do short lists. I don't do storyboards. Um, that was on, on the edge. I was in the middle of shooting on the edge, the short film, and I suddenly realized I just had constrained myself before walking onto the set. And I was getting what I was. I was looking at rushes. First two days rushes, and it was like. Uh, all the energy I saw and felt on the set was not on camera. And I realized, well, look, you're constraining your frame, your pre-thinking is really holding you back and you're not catching anything. You're just going there to, you know, you fix the, your frame and then just let things are happening. You know, rea the camera is not reacting because if, if you're not moving with the flow of that energy, you just catch wisps of it and, and, and hence you cannot, you don't have anything. Uh, you, well, you have something, but uh, it, it's not the kind of cinema that I was looking for. I, um, I like things that are visceral, things that you know that immediately touch. You know, um, I want the I want an audience to feel what I feel on set, uh, and so it prepared me. It, it actually the London Film School and all all this process, all that process, I suppose forms what, um, the sort of filmmaker, whatever that is that I am. I am right now. In the mid '70s, my we 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 um, my dad uh, used to take us to the cinema. To, we, there was cinema. There were there were cinemas then in Lagos, where where I was growing up. Um, and we would go there, but we would see like I remember we I remember we saw like Bollywood films. Um, uh, then I, the first big thing I saw, big sort of picture I saw was. King Kong and Godzilla, I think it was, <laughs> and uh, you know, sort of spectacle, sort of like you know. And I, I, I remember, I remember, uh, I always remember this Bollywood film that I, my mom and I just sat there crying and crying because it was this love story and this woman that lost, she'd lost her love to I don't know fire. I, don't, I just have imagery, and and I remember, I remember the tune to this to this uh, one, uh, musical piece tuned to this film, which someday, I don't know, I'd love to go back and find this film, because this film really, really touched me. And, but it, I think it was at that early age I realized that cinema was, the strongest cinema was one that had like an emotional connection to an audience. And, um, um, but then I got to learn a lot of things later, because that, that I kind of rejected for a while. Uh, after, when I became a filmmaker, I, I started to move towards more intellectual type, um, uh, kind of wanting to make, move into more intellectual type of cinema. But um, I th I, then I realized that, you know, it's good for me to, to watch and to, uh, it, I, I always like everything that is, I can't do. What interests me is not what I can do. Um, it's the things I can't do. And, and, uh, and for a while I thought in that direction, but I realized this is just to feed myself and not necessarily to, Changed me in a sense, um, but this, um, apart from apart from you know watching these films, then then there was then there was a long period of really no cinema, no cinema. Um, again, like I said, because of the military dictatorship, everything was just like wiped out. People were terrified to go out in the evenings, and hence you know um, and, uh, you know the economy of the country was still in tatters, and and, and so all of that collapsed. Um, but I never thought of myself as wanting to be a filmmaker until um, I thought, of, you know, I, 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 I met a friend of mine, that's it. I met a friend who said, oh, I'm th thinking of um, studying cinema. And I said, well, what is, you know, what kind of, what kind of a job is this? What kind of a life? <laughs> Sounds interesting. And we went to um, 
an interview for it was a sort of private school in London at the time and, and offering film video foundation course in film video and photography. And I sat there and I thought, oh, this is interesting. It's got a bit of science. I, I know some of the things sound very familiar, you know, lenses, optics, uh, sound, magnetism, um, uh, uh, mechanics, you know, all these sort of things were sort of ringing through. And then, and then of course, then the creative side, which I thought was great, you know, because I, I was into music earlier on, at about 13, 14, I had a band in school, we, made a, we recorded an album, so I, there was this creative thing, but music was, I realized very quickly that it's not what I wanted to do. And, and, but anyway, that's how I, all of this stuff, it's a bit, it's a bit sort of like, because I, 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 it's not, a, for me, it's not, I think my life's not, I've never really been a one through clear straight line. Um, I, I, I've always sort of, I'm always sort of reacting constantly in the moment to um, things around me and, and I'm trying to find myself within the spaces I'm in, trying to define myself not by pre-thoughts but by situations I find myself and that's just my, I suppose that's my nature and that's where this kid that watched this film at, at seven years old, eight years old, suddenly um, never thought anything about this could be an interesting career, suddenly um, ended up making films. So, <clears throat> that's always the, the thing, because um, to make a film is really is trying to find something, what would hold my interest? What would I, you know, sort of empty my mind and sort of delve into or dive into uh, and would sustain an interest and, you know, uh, for, uh, unworthy of that, all that effort. The more, you, the more you, you spend your time realizing, the, coming to terms with the realities of, of filmmaking and stuff like that, you realize it's better, it better be something really worth it. Um, otherwise, it's just a, it's a waste of time. When I sort of like thought to myself, look, if you want to be a filmmaker, you know, I was terrified for five years after film school. And I just, you know, I think it was, you know, apart from the fact of trying, writing scripts, writing scripts, sending out to the BBC, sending out to the BFI, sending out to British Screen, sending out to uh, Channel 4, they were doing the whole thing and just getting rejections, rejections, and rejections. At some point it just felt very, I felt I was comfortable just writing scripts. You know, I, I was perhaps terrified of, 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 going, of directing, directing something. And, I, and so I, I um, I sold my car, so what I've had and just went off and shot this film. But it was a film that really I wanted to talk about the idea of uh, being away and the loneliness of being out of, you know, uh, being in a place, space where, you f where I felt maybe I'm, I felt you feel alienated, but then it was, it's really, um, maybe this space doesn't have any room for me to express myself. And so it, it, that sort of turned into a kind of story of a young man and a, and a woman in a relationship who are totally sort of floating around and lost in London, trying to find, make a sense of their lives with a kind of fantasy or, um, in, of, of a place that existed, that, 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 they, that was home, or that is home, outside of the space in which, that, in which they lived, and all the complexities of that. And so, it, 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 which is for me a huge subject, and it's, it's, it's personal. That's another thing, the films, I, the, the subject matter has to feel personal to me. I have to have, find something. So that was that, was that. that was on the edge. And for Rage, again, was, um, you know, the, the thing about music, I, you know, which I'd, I'd been in, I'd sort of played around, messed around with music at, at a young age. Um, I wanted to, to, to talk about that. I wanted to talk about the idea of multiculturalism, explore it, but not in a sort of intellectual way, but in a sort of real life kind of every, you know, how it affected three kids. Uh, one, one black kid, a mixed race kid, and a white kid, and you know, this friendship and how society gradually eats at them, but they're not aware of it. They think it's something to do with their relationship. But something that happens at the period of, you know, where, you know, late, teen, late teenage years where you're beginning to 
define, find your right, the sense of like, who you are, and then gradually friendships start to um, become vulnerable and start to collapse, and people start to drift apart. And, and basically, the, the sadness of, all, of that, but also it's a necessary thing of trying to find, define yourself and not to be held together by a group. I don't mind much anymore about labels because it's not something I, I see. It's something other people see. I, I, I remember spending a lot, a long time trying to, you know, do an interview. Oh no, no, no don't call me an African filmmaker. You know, but I, you know, really, I, I don't care what people call what people call me. But I am um, you know, on, on that label me on that level. But I'm a filmmaker. I deal with things with a language that is universal. You know, uh, cinema. Um, Probably one of the two, three languages I'm sort of I, I struggle to try and speak or try to, you know, communicate with, um, and so I don't, I don't, you know, it's 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 sad because it it it, it, um, it but that's the limitation of the imagination of the person that perceives me, but it's not my limitation. I don't see myself in those terms. I deal with emotion. I deal with with languages that cro with things that uh, elements of language or things that cross barriers, you know, that, that, that connects uh, the human, uh, that connects humanity and that's the direction. It took me a while to come to, to this, to, to come to understand myself and my work on this level, but this is a level I feel comfortable with and that's why I feel like, you know, I, I'd, I'd make a film anywhere. You know, because as long as there are people, and I spend time in that society, and I can connect with them on those levels, and I can find, I can find visual languages to translate their inner feelings, um, you know, I, I, I feel free. I sort of feel, feel, I feel free as a filmmaker. I think there is a need, um, and it's simply to, uh, on a practical level, to to give people a sense of, you know, camaraderie, a sense of a place that they feel that they are understood or their problems are understood, and you know, on this, but strictly on a practical level, but not to create cinema and define it by those on, on those terms, but to but a sense, a space, an umbrella. Um, um, I, 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 and one that can sort of say, you know, there's no point. There's no point if, uh, say, being looked at like this, like we were talking about earlier, being defined defined by the other as as an African filmmaker, and because of it, because of that definition, that other refuses to give you a space because that's how it's, that's how it perceives you. Um, it's it's very difficult and it's a very cold place, and you know. And a lot of people just give up. And so eventually you have to create something for yourself. But as long as you don't get trapped in a mindset that that demands that you make a kind of film. And to, I don't like labels. I don't like, I think that once you, I think if you define something, you put it in a box. And if you put it in a box, it will, soon, it will, it will die. It will die sooner or later. Um, but that's the difference. Um, it's purely on a pragmatic level, as a support system.